Using the Sun Angle Analyzer will help us to understand the real reasons for the seasons. You know that at some times of the day the sun is high overhead, and at other times it's low in the sky. If you compare the highest point the sun reaches in different places around the world, you will find that in some places, like on the equator, the sun is very high up overhead. Where we are in California, the sun gets almost 60 degrees up in the sky. As we move farther north, the sun's high noon position will be lower and lower in the sky. This tool helps simulate the effect of the sun hitting the earth at different latitudes. And it also helps us to see the effects of the sun hitting the earth at different angles at different times of the year. The sun is not hitting the North Pole the same as it's hitting the South Pole. In fact, in this example, the sun's not even hitting the North Pole at all. There are three parts of this tool that make it work. Number one, the hole on the side and the pointer represent the sun. The pointer must stay pointed at your light source, so your sun's light will come into the analyzer through the hole. Number two, there are markings along the side that correspond to the angle of the sun, meaning how high or low it is in the sky. When it's set at 90, that means we are simulating being on the equator with the sun 90 degrees from the ground straight up overhead. And zero means being on a pole with the sun down low on the horizon, zero degrees above the horizon. The third part of this tool is the paper that represents the ground. Pay attention to where the ground is at all times. Think as if your feet were on that ground. The way you use the tool is that you simply line up the pointer with your model sun and watch what happens as you change the angle. Be sure to move the ground, not the side with the window, so the pointer stays pointing at the sun. The cool thing about this tool is that as you change the angle the sun is hitting, you can see what happens to the light that comes in the window. Sometimes the light coming in the window is concentrated on only a few squares. But other times when the angle is different, that same amount of light that entered the window is now spread out over more squares. Another way to look at why the sun's energy is sometimes concentrated in one place or other times spread out is to take our model one step further. Imagine that the light from this model's sun is all these little sticks. Only a certain amount of sticks can enter the window. When the window is straight up overhead, that is representing the sun 90 degrees from the horizon, or in other words, we are on the equator, with the sun high in the sky. Now all the sticks, or rays of sunlight, are concentrated on just a few squares. But when the angle of the sun is changed, that same number of sticks are now spread out over a much bigger area. The sun is now lower on the horizon, so for a certain amount of light energy, it is spread out over a larger area. The amount of energy reaching each square is much less than it would be if there were fewer squares to cover. The sun's energy hits the earth at different angles, in different locations, at different times of the day and the year. The amount of heat energy given off is different in these different situations. This is one more piece of the puzzle to explain the real reasons for the seasons. Mm -hmm.